with your indulgence, let me dispense with the formalities and give my greetings to one and all. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this forum. I am pleased to note that both public and private sectors are represented to share their take on today's theme, which to me is rich, timely, and responsive to the changing landscape. Congratulations to Sharka and SGV for coming up with a theme that is sure to spark intelligent and forward-looking discussions. The topic assigned to me will lay the groundwork, providing an overview of where we are in delivering financial support to the agriculture sector. On my part, I will present the status in broad strokes, but I am also taking liberty to dovetail with land bank initiatives that are in stride with this march towards financial technology and innovation to advance not only agriculture, but other sectors as well. Let me take off from the two broad components comprising the sources of credit for agriculture. The formal sector includes commercial banks, thrift banks, and development banks, rural banks, and other non-bank financial institutions. The financial activities of both private and public formal credit entities are regulated by the financial rules and regulations of the government. On the other hand, we know that the in informal sector consists of traditional money lenders, such as traders, processors, millers, and others that fall outside the legal and regulatory banking framework. As of September 2020, the total loans granted to agriculture, forestry, and fishing sector by the Philippine banking system was valued at 258.86 billion pesos, 3% higher from the 251.32 billion recorded in 2019. Of this amount, Universal banks captured the highest percentage share at 76.49%, followed by rural banks at 8.21%. The agriculture sector registered an average growth rate of 2% for the past 10 years. As of the third quarter in 2020, the sector recorded a positive growth, but at a slow pace, with an annual average gross value added, expanding by just 1.2%. We now take a look at the compliance of the banks to the mandatory 25% under Republic Act number 10,000, or the Agri-Agra Reform Credit of 2009. The Agri-Agra law requires all banking institutions to allot 10% of their total lending portfolio for agrarian reform credit and 15% for agriculture loans. As of December 2019, overall compliance of banks reached $733.9 billion, representing 11.9% of the bank's total loanable funds of $6.1 trillion. This is 13% short of the 25% requirement under the law. The banking industry in general undercomplied with 10.8% and the 15% agricultural quota and 1.1% and the 10% agrarian reform quota. By type of bank, Rural and cooperative banks are historically compliant with the law with a compliance rate of 32.5%. Universal and commercial banks' compliance rate is at 11.8%. The downward trend of banks' compliance, both an agri and agra portion, indicate that some banks opted not to lend to the agri-agra sector due to perceived high cost and risk in lending. 
Notwithstanding this, from an economic standpoint, the sector remains as a potential driving force for inclusive and broad-based growth as millions of small landholders, fishers, and other agricultural workers comprise the majority of the unbanked and unserved segments of society. Agricultural financing plays a critical role for widespread adoption of productivity enhancing technologies that usually require modern inputs such as fertilizer and other farm chemicals, quality seeds, water, and machineries at optimal level. Let me now share with you Land Bank's intensified support to agriculture. Starting with our compliance to the Agri-Agra law, which as of December 2020 reached 76.95% for Agri and 11.52% for Agra. Overall, Land Bank's Agri lending has been steadily growing from 222.05 billion in 2018, it grew to 236.31 billion in 2019, and 237.62 billion in 2020. The modest growth last year is due primarily to the widespread impact of the pandemic, which prevented expansion and even closure of businesses in livestock fisheries, agri-processing, and trading, among others. Land bank lending to agriculture not only covers loans to small farmers, fishers, and their associations, but also other players in the agribusiness agri value chain. In terms of economic activities, land bank loans for crop, livestock, and fisheries reached 59 0.3 billion, while loans for agri-processing and trading reach 73.1 billion. 105.2 billion loans were extended for agri-related projects, including public markets, farm-to-market roads, warehouses, irrigation systems, and slaughterhouses. Land banks intensified support to agri in recent years resulted to the expansion in the number of farmers and fishers reached. From 889,669 farmer beneficiaries in 2019, it more than doubled to 2.67 million in 2020, exceeding the target of 2 million small farmers and fishers for assistance last year. This significant increase in reaching more farmers is primarily due to land banks lending strategy, which capitalizes largely on collaboration. Apart from employing direct lending mode, loans are channeled through farmers and fisher cooperatives, irrigators associations, rural banks, and other conduits. Our strengthened partnership with the Department of Agriculture for various programs in particular has boosted our reach to farmers. Land Bank administers lending programs for the DA and the Department of Agrarian Reform, serving primarily as distribution arm of loan proceeds and cash grant interventions. Our collaboration with partner agencies underscores the power of technological innovation to accelerate financial inclusion. Land Bank's experience in recent years as the distribution arm of the national government's social protection programs that are carried out by partner agencies like the DSWD for the CCT or the Conditional Cash Transfer a new city and conditional cash transfer programs, DOTR for transport modernization, DOLE for assistance to displaced workers and OFWs, and DANDAR for support to farmers. All of this have driven Land Bank 
to adopt digital solutions that facilitate the immediate, efficient, and secure delivery of emergency subsidy to disadvantaged individuals and communities. One, one project which we believe will truly unlock the potential of digital innovations for inclusive finance is through the Philippine Identification System. In partnership with the Philippine Statistics Authority, Land Bank provides registrants of the Philippine Philsys ID with their own transaction accounts. Beyond its ability to address the lack of identity documents commonly cited as a barrier by the unbank, such a digital ID system can also enable the delivery of innovative end-to-end -end financial services and at the same time promote the seamless delivery of government support interventions to beneficiaries across the country. All of these efforts are consistent and anchored at the government's program to accelerate digital financial inclusion efforts to fully mainstream all Filipino households and businesses, including agricultural stakeholders into the financial system in the COVID-19 era. There is much more to discuss, like what we in Land Bank envision for empowering agriculture through data analytics and digital transformation. But I think I've already encroached on the schedule of the next speaker. So let me close by saying that we remain attentive to potential avenues by which we can fully harness technology innovations to unlock financial inclusion barriers while adapting industry best practices in agricultural financing. As we navigate in this digital age towards digital financial inclusion and inclusive growth, we also remain focused on advancing the country's agricultural development through greater collaboration and more meaningful partnerships with public and private sectors consistent with the all of nation approach.